Hey guys, RC here, back with episode 18 of our bullbound college football journeyman save, American football style. Uh, it's been a little while since I've recorded on this series, just been busy with a lot of stuff. Uh, you may notice during this episode, uh, and maybe the next one, I'll be, I may be messing with my glasses a little bit or holding them up to be able to see. Uh, I'm diabetic. I know I've mentioned that before in other videos. But right now my blood sugar is really out of whack and it's just causing me all kind of problems with my vision. Uh, so, you know, it, it's I have to have my glasses like right here to be able to read my screen. So if you see me do that, that's what I'm doing. Either that or I may pull them down and I can I can see it blurry actually better than with my glasses on right now, which is horrible. Uh, or I turn my head like this, but then that puts a big strain on my neck. And right now my neck is all messed up from doing that for about the last week. But enough of my problems. Let's get into uh, the problems with uh, the Cajuns. So uh, taking a look here with Florida International, uh, we won this game 30 to 20, and that was a huge win because that got us uh, our sixth win on the season. So that was a big deal. So remember, six wins get you to bowl eligibility. Uh, and we did something different in this game. We started the freshman Mike Smith, and he had a he had a good game: four touchdowns, one pick, and. You know, even though he's below 50%, if you can do that but throw four, you know, three or four touchdowns and only one pick, you usually take that trade off, especially as a lower prestige school. It's when you have a, you know, 40 or 50% completion game and no touchdowns and three interceptions. That's uh, what causes the problems. Uh, I will scroll down. You can take a look at the stats there. And I will go down through here. There's our running backs, receivers, the line. And Mike Smith was player of the game. So that was our sixth win. Then we played Buffalo. It's an out-of-conference game. And our next-to-last game of the season, pretty evenly matched affair. But they got 17 points in the fourth quarter. We blew a 7-6 lead. Uh, and we were only three of six on field goals in this one. I had actually changed some of the settings in the play calling. Uh, we had already dropped the max field goal to 38 yards. I further reduced it to 35 yards uh, because the kicker was 0 for 3 in that last game with the win. Uh, in this one, he's three of six. What I also did is I upped the percentage to go for it on fourth down from 50 to 60. Now, that's not a percentage. 50 is the average, so average is very low. You might go for it on, you know, once or twice a game uh, if it's short yardage. So 60%, maybe two or three or four times. I'm, you know, I've really, I've never messed with that since I started playing this game, but I did uh, in this one. Uh, it did not pan out and we lose. Take, there's your uh, stats for the game. And as you can see, Mike Smith, a miserable 18 of 58. And there I go, got to move my glasses. 354 yards and three interceptions. And that's why I mentioned that example a minute ago. Uh, poor completion, no touchdowns, high interceptions. You're going to lose every time doing that. Scrolling down through the rest of the statistics there. And David Chavez of Buffalo was their player of the game. And we play our rival game in the final match of the season, final game of the season. And they score 17 points in the fourth quarter. Uh, we were winning 13 to 6. We were up 13 nil at half. And uh, they just came back, dominated us. We got a 31 yard touchdown pass from Mike Smith to Chris Emery, but uh, not enough to hold them off. Two scores in the final two minutes, and that sealed our doom. 23-20 loss. Uh, we actually outperformed them for the most part. Smith was 35 of 66, which is a solid completion percentage. One touchdown, three interceptions. So that's uh, 
again, just one of those games where uh, they get the better of him. And Ronald Lewis, their linebacker, player of the game. So we end the season in sixth position, six and six overall, three and four in the conference. That's not going to get us a bowl game, even though we are bowl eligible. But that should help our prestige moving forward. I would hope. And there's our prestige at 29. So I did, did want to, before we finish out the video and finish up the game stuff, I wanted to kind of talk to you. So there's a, you know, there's all kind of nuances in this game. So for example, let's go ahead and take a look at our guy, at our guys, right? So Williams was the senior. We started him most of the year, nine starts, 59% completion, 14 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. I probably should have started him those last three, but I said, you know what? I really, you know, he's graduating. We kind of got bowl eligibility. We're not going to get a bowl game. Let's give Mike the last three games, see if we can get him developed a little bit to where he's ready to step into that starter's position next year because those other two guys are going to be graduating. So he's our only quarterback that will be on the team next year outside of who we recruit. So he's going to probably start next season. Accuracy, above average, although it's not panning out here. Touch, which is the ability to drop a ball into a spot. Running, not very good. Uh, instincts, not very good. And you know we've talked about ratings. I think instincts and intelligence are very important for quarterbacks. Um, low instincts leads to more sacks. I don't know that for a fact, but that's the way I interpret it. Uh, so that's one reason uh, that, you know, he's been sacked uh, 27 times in 319 attempts because he doesn't, you know, if you watch football, you hear the announcers talk about sensing or feeling the pressure. And I think that's your instincts. Uh, intelligence is being able to pick out the right receiver put it on the on the spot and then touch is being able to put it to help them use their ratings to get those yards after the catch and you noticed all season our yards after the catch were very very low uh but i wanted to show so danny is a uh old friend of mine we've fallen out of touch he uh he met a girl and quit talking to anybody uh so uh but uh anyway uh, he, uh, he and I spent, you know, we're, we're good friends for a long time and talked a lot about the game. So I want to drop into our league website and show you something. So this is uh, a prestige chart on our, on our web, on our league, uh, league website. And I want to look at Air Force, first of all. So that's this line here. So Air Force is the team that one of the teams that I currently, uh, coach. Now, if we go over, I picked them up, I don't remember exactly when, but it was probably somewhere in this range here, so 2015, 2019, um, and you can see they were about a 38, 36 prestige team at the time I took them over. I don't remember the exact year, but, you know, 37, 38, a big jump to 46. That's an eight point jump. That's one of the biggest that I've ever seen. Uh, eight, I, I think I've seen a 10 maybe, but that's very rare. Uh, and then, you know, 45, up to 50, 51, made it to 59. And then we're down to 55 again. So 59 is where we tapped out or capped out. And I was mid-30s when I took them over. So we put 20-plus points on the prestige. But you can see going from 2017, that's 18 seasons. So it's, you know, a point a season, two points a season on net average is about what you can expect. Now, I'm going to come up to the Big 12 here. And we're going to pay attention to North Texas, right? <clears throat> so I mentioned my, my old buddy, Danny. 
Danny was their manager, their coach when the league started. So they were a 30 prestige team. Now they were not in the Big 12, neither was Rice. We've moved teams around as prestiges have fluctuated. But what I wanted you to do is pay attention to North Texas. Uh, you know, it took him, you know, a good six seasons to get back to 31. And then from there, he just kind of, you know, walked his way up. 37, but then 44, 47, 55. So, I mean, there's an eight-point jump over three seasons. 56 into the 60s. And I want to say he left. But let me scroll across here. And I'm going to put them right on that top line so you don't have to keep track of that when I move this. So they're the top line here. So... 2035, I want to say he probably left somewhere in, in this range here. So probably, probably at 72 was his last year. So you can see they dropped off a little bit, but they've still been a consistent mid to high 60 prestige team, a solid mid-level, uh, you know, power five, but not one of the power programs. Uh, so, you know, uh, the computer is maintaining his success, but you know, it's, it, it just shows you a, it can be done. And I've got to believe that had Danny stayed there, it's possible he'd be up in the eighties right now. So a 50 point jump over the life of the league in 36 seasons, that's huge. Uh, so I kind of wanted you to see that. I think that's it. Oh, conference championships. Yep. Well, we're not in it this week. We don't have a conference championship game. So let's finish the conference championships and then see what happens. All right. We did not get a bull bid. There's your four team playoff Miami and Michigan, Pittsburgh and Texas AM are in the four team playoff because we're doing the, B the old BCS, right? Uh, and so award winners, uh, we can go look at that. There's your national. Uh, let's take a look. There's your Heisman winner. And I'm just going to scroll through these. You guys can pause and look at the, look at how they, how they played, what their stats were. Uh, but there's a running back winning the Heisman with 2,400 yards, 19 rushing touchdowns. There's your linebacker award, quarterback award. And you can see, look at that, oh, Davey O'Brien, 70% completion, and we were under 50. So 32 touchdowns to eight interceptions. Doak Walker is the running back award, receiver. But anyway, I'm just going to tab through these. Pause it if you want to look at them. And then we'll take a look at the uh, first team All-Americans. So there's your offense, defense, second team All-American offense, second team All-American defense. And then let's jump into the Sun Belt. Coach of the year was Middle Tennessee's William Norman. I can't read any of this. Uh, let's see. Any of our boys make it in here? All right. Chris Emery at wide receiver, first team all-conference. William Shaw, first team all-conference guard. Emery was the offensive player of the year. He was also freshman of the year. Over on the defensive side of the ball, Don Hayes, first team all conference linebacker. Jeffrey Olson, all conference corner. And Emory, well, that's just a repeat of the freshman and coach of the year. Uh, Carlos Williams was second team all conference, 15 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, 2,400 yards. Wayne Collins, uh, second team fullback. Raymundo Fleming was our second team all conference tight end. 
Sylvester Costello, second team linebacker, Lewis Nash, second team cornerback. So we had some guys that performed reasonably well. Let's take a look at our stats. So there's your quarterback leaders based on yardage. Um, 80 less attempts and only four less touchdowns, but two more interceptions. So not great. Uh, we're really struggling there. There's your rushing leaders in yardage. Uh, Emory was all conference, but remember, he did most of his damage receiving. He was our leading receiver. 77 yard uh, catches, 1,190 yards. And you may be going, hey, what's his ratings? Well, he's got 58 hands, so he's got above average hands. His route running's not great, um, but his running is at least average. So if he catches the ball, <laughs> and let's see how many drops he had. He had five drops on the season. 3.6% of the balls that found him uh, were dropped. Uh, 15 and a half yards per catch, 48 total yards after the catch. So he makes some, you know, he makes some big plays uh, out of the backfield. And this is where you can also keep track of player awards uh, on their player card uh, when you're looking at your seniors, if you're looking to kind of recap their career. Uh, there's our offensive. Well, let's go back to rushing. So our rushing leader was White with 205 yards. Emory was our leading receiver. Fleming, our tight end, uh, had 831 yards. Five key run blocks for Shaw. 24 pancakes. That's huge. Randall was horrible. 16 out of 36 on field goals. And he was uh, 30 of 30 on extra points. So he made five from inside the 30. A oh, five of 11 in, inside the 30. So even on short field goals, he's under 50%. Seven of eight, surprisingly, in the mid range. Four of 17 over 40 yards and didn't try any over 50 yards. So this is where you can come, kind of come in and evaluate how they're doing. Do you want to scale back? And again, he is a red player, but says here, as his career moves forward, he should develop decent leg strength. His accuracy will not be special, but hopefully it will reach average. He will struggle with consistency, and this will plague him throughout his career. But with a little more work, he'll be a guy coaches can depend on to provide good kickoffs. Unfortunately, that's not what we're looking for, so <laughs> we, will, we will hope to have a little bit better shot there. All right, let's jump in and sim out the uh, bowl games and that we had Middle Tennessee playing this week, and they lose to Rice 28-10 to in the New Orleans Bowl, and that looks like it was the only bowl game that we got. And let's scroll up to the top 25. So here's the semifinals. Michigan beats Miami 18-17 on a field goal in the fourth quarter at the 205 mark. So big win for the Wolverines. And they will take on Pittsburgh, reliving their Tony Dorsett glory days. Uh, 20 to 16 winners over AM. And the national championship. Michigan favored by 11 points in the Rose Bowl. And Pittsburgh, 23-point explosion in the second quarter wins, 35-26. Michigan distraught, and Pittsburgh ends the season unbeaten number one national champions. All right, so that's going to end the season. So we'll call the episode there. Uh, when I advance the stage, it will flip over to the next season. And uh, hopefully I get a job offer. That would be nice. But we'll leave you guys with that cl cliffhanger. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next episode. Take care. Bye.